Hello Internet, Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and I'm just checking in. Before we get down to business, the footage on your screen is from the game Broforce. I was gifted this game recently by one of my Steam friends who goes under the alias Eric, and I would just like to thank Eric very much for that because I've really enjoyed this game. I put four or five hours into it already, and I'm happy to say that it is living up to my expectations. I played it a bit when it was in early alpha, and everything is just as good, if not a whole lot better, than it was back then. So, really happy with that game, and I would highly recommend you take a look at it, and perhaps at some point, I will take a look at it here on the channel. So I like to make these little checking in videos every now and then to kind of let you know what the next few weeks of content on the channel is going to be. And in fact, I am here to report, unfortunately, that we're going to be content light for the next week or two, and that is because of Wildstar. Wildstar did just launch into its early access on the 31st of May, and I'm happy to report that it is a pretty damn good game. I already knew that from the beta, but now that it is out in full release or in partial early full release, yeah, it's everything that I thought it would be. It's everything that I hoped it would be, and I'm really, really excited to be playing. Right now I'm playing with Brian from Nitro Beard, trying to organize playing with some of my other MMO friends, but it's been difficult because the servers are really, really packed here during this weekend. A lot of the servers, multiple hour wait times. Some of the more popular servers, there are rumors of already hitting raids, and I guess, you know, it's been out for 48 hours as of my recording this. That's enough time to rush through leveling, I guess. But it's been a very interesting launch. Things have been, for the most part, smooth. They had a couple of logging in errors uh, on Saturday, I believe. But for the most part, everything's going really well. And, and I really, really enjoy the game. It is that perfect mix of classic-style MMO questing, which is a little bit annoying and dated, but tolerable, with modern action mechanics. So for those of you not familiar with Wildstar, it is a traditional questing MMO. As I said, think of World of Warcraft's questing. Yes, you need to go fetch 10 bear asses or whatever, but mix that with the combat of a Guild Wars 2 style game, which is more focused on dodging enemy attacks and movement and uh, moving around while you're attacking and just generally being mobile. And I really, really do like that. And so far, the game is an absolute home run for me. So that's what I'm going to be doing pretty intently and intensely for the next week or so. I will say that I did toy around with the idea of covering Wildstar on the channel, but I just don't think it works. I don't think that an MMO, which is only going to appeal to a certain amount of people who watch the channel, is something that I should be devoting time into creating videos for. And there are other parties involved when I'm playing, and it's, it's difficult to feel like I'm making a video that is actually usable when I'm just walking around questing with people that I enjoy playing games with. So no Wildstar coverage here on the channel. Uh, but this is a good time to take a moment to talk about what we will uh, be featuring here on the channel. Um, this is usually the part of any checking in video or my old weekend roundup or roundup show where I would say things that never happen. I would make promises that I never keep. Uh, but this is sort of aspirational stuff. Some of this is already in the pipeline. Some of it's already done, actually, or uh, in the works uh, to a degree that it will be done. But some of it is just me talking about things that I'm planning to do, which, uh, you know, life allowing me, I will do. But if life decides to be a uh, dick about it, then I won't do it. So uh, let's talk about something that is definitely happening. I sat down a couple of weeks ago to start a Magic the Gathering Friday Night Magic series. And when I did... I was never able to find a game. Now, I've played Magic. Uh, this is Duels of the Planeswalker 2014. I've played this over the last few weeks, and I've been able to get games. But when I sat down on a Friday night, which is supposed to be the biggest and busiest night for Magic because of Friday Night Magic, I couldn't get a game. I don't know if it was an issue with their matchmaking system or if it was really just dead at 10 o'clock on a Friday, but I couldn't get a game. And I didn't want to waste all that uh, time I had set aside to record. So... I booted up Nuclear Throne, and I recorded a couple of episodes of what will become a Nuclear Throne series. So that is a game, if you haven't heard from Vlambeer, who made uh, Super Crate Box and Luft Rousers and many other great arcade action games. And it is it's sort of a twin-stick shooter type game. Uh, basically, you have a little man that you move around, and that guy has a reticle that you can kind of spin around. And, you know, if you use a controller, you would use the dual sticks, but in this case, I'm using a mouse and keyboard. 
and you are progressing through a roguelike environment. You're picking up random weapons and power-ups. Well, not random weapons, but you're picking up weapons randomly from a pool of static weapons, and you're getting power-ups by leveling up. It's a really interesting and fun game, and I enjoy it, and I've actually put a lot of time into it, and I wanted to do a series about it. In fact, I talked on a free-to-play podcast about the idea of doing a series about it, and when my Magic the Gathering exploits failed, I immediately went to Nuclear Throne and started recording. So I have two episodes in the can, ready to go, for a Nuclear Throne series. I want to record one more before I start releasing things. I'll probably release it on a pretty modest schedule, maybe once a week or once every two weeks, so I can stay ahead of the game in terms of, of the recordings. Uh, but as soon as I have a third episode recorded, I will start releasing the Nuclear Throne series. I'm predicting maybe 10 to 15 episodes of the series. This is not going to be a perpetual series. There's going to be a point where I feel like I've reached a logical conclusion. And the game is in early access. So the game's going to continue to evolve, and, and there's going to be a benefit to stopping letting them finish the game, and then coming back to it later. So look forward to a Nuclear Throne series. That should be a really fun time. I've really, really enjoyed recording those videos and just playing that game in general. Now, speaking of that Friday Night Magic show, I've not given up on that idea. I've really been intrigued by going back to Magic after playing so much Hearthstone and continuing to play quite a lot of Hearthstone and really seeing how Hearthstone is the logical realization of a simplified version of Magic and, and how great that is. And actually playing Hearthstone and playing Magic at the same time has made me appreciate both games more. I appreciate Magic's complexity now that I'm playing a simplified version of Magic, and I appreciate Hearthstone's simplicity now that I'm playing a more complex CCG in the meantime. So it's actually been mutually beneficial to those two games that I play them uh, in parallel. And it's been a really interesting experience, something I will talk about on the Friday Night Magic series that will still happen, or I still plan for it to happen, after the release of Duels of the Planeswalkers 2015, which is due out at some point. I probably could have Googled it and found that out, but I didn't do my research. So when that game comes out, I will purchase it and I will start into the process of a Friday Night Magic series there with uh, what should be a revitalized community so that if what I was experiencing was a lack of players for them to match me with, that shouldn't happen with a newly released version of Magic. So I'm looking forward to that because I've really been passionate about Magic uh, for a long time. I'm When I say a long time, I mean 20 years, really. Right around 20 years. I think I started playing Magic in 94, 95. Uh, so... Yeah, it, it's been a, a, a thing that it's been a constant in my life, more so than anything else. You know, I've stopped other hobbies, uh, but magic has always been there. Even if it's been in the periphery and I haven't really been actively playing it, I've always been aware of it, and I've always been, uh, I've always considered myself a magic player. So that is something that's going to happen, and I'm looking forward to actually getting that started after the release of Duels 2015. And the last major promise I want to make that I can potentially not keep is to return to devlogged. I've talked about this before. I've talked about it in writing and probably in a previous checking in video. And it is a reality. It's something that's going to happen. I just have to get the timing right. I have already started recording the voiceovers for episode five. Episode five of devlogged is going to be a recap of episodes one through four. And I'm going to take a look back at the games uh, from one through four. Some of that has actually changed dramatically. Uh, at least one of those games has been officially canceled and a couple more have just stopped with updates, uh, while a few others have been released or really, really improved in the meantime. So it's going to be exciting to recap those, and it's going to be exciting to relaunch Devlog. I'm thinking late summer to relaunch Devlog with an all-new look. I've got to take some time to get better at my uh, video editing skills, just in general, uh, with an all-new uh, theme song, which is going to be a custom theme. I've already talked to a couple of composers about a custom theme. I'm liking what I'm hearing, but I'm going to put another all-call out to Twitter so that some of my game, game dev pals maybe will hook me up with some composers that they know of. But uh, custom music is just a, a, something else I can do with that show that I feel, I don't want to say legitimizes it more, but separates it more. Uh, I think Devlog has been one of the more popular things that I've ever done. I've had videos just hit and get popular, like the Super Hexagon video, which is probably one of the worst videos I've ever made. I just ramble for like the first four minutes about personal bullshit. 
uh, but um, I've had videos just hit and get popular, but I've never had a sustained popularity with a series like I have with Devlog. So I'm gonna return to that, not because it's something that I think will get me views, but it's because it's something that I'm really truly passionate about. I love watching games that are in development. I love talking to developers who are working with games, and I love providing a conduit through which we as fans can actually get excited about games that are six months or six years out. You know, it's encouraging to the developers, as I've talked to a few, to hear that people are looking forward to a game that they're working on. That's why they run things like devlogs, uh, not just to document their progress, but also to help get people hyped up, you know, get people excited about what they're doing. And a show like Devlogged contributes to that, and I really enjoy making it. So Devlogged will return for a fifth episode to close out the unofficial season one sometime in the next couple or three weeks, and the series itself will return in late summer on a probably two-episode-a-month schedule. So that's the current plan with Devlogged. Uh, I reserve rights to not keep any of those promises, as I always do. Uh, but life willing, all of that will happen just exactly as I've just described it. But if life decides to be a dick, well, you might never hear from me again. Speaking of hearing from me, don't forget that you can hear from me every week on the free-to-play podcast over on nitrobeard.com. I've really enjoyed being part of that crew and uh, coming into an ensemble and, and bringing some unique views into the, into the crew. Uh, a lot of those guys have particular preferences, which I think is always great. It's always great to have a diverse uh, group when you're bringing in an ensemble. Uh, nothing's worse than five guys who all just agree with each other about everything, and it just becomes this weird echo chamber. Uh, but we all have these distinct gaming histories and views, and I think it's really, really interesting to uh, get five people like that together and have them talk about games. And uh, one of the best things that we do over there, I think, in my personal opinion, or certainly one of my favorite things, is the Illiterates Book Club, and that's going on right now. Uh, it's not some kind of weird charity thing. It's actually our version of a game club where we pick a game, we spend a couple of weeks playing it, then we reconvene to talk about it. Uh, right now we're playing Odin Sphere, which is a vanillaware joint from the PS2 era. It's not like uh, Jiggly Breast vanillaware from uh, Dragon's Crown or anything like that. It's, it's much more subdued, though there are still plenty of you know curvaceous bodies in it. Uh, but it's been an odd game to play. Uh, I mostly missed the PS2 era. I was a devoted PC gamer during the uh, PS2 era, so I mostly missed it. I had an Xbox at that time. I think I got a PS2 pretty late in the life cycle, but I didn't play a lot of PS2 games, uh, period. So I missed a lot of those games, and I think maybe if I was a little more involved in the PS2 era, I might appreciate uh, the, the way this game plays a little bit more, but uh, right now I'm kind of iffy on it. I'm going to put another couple of hours into it tonight before we record the podcast, uh, but yeah. But that being said, it's actually a really cool thing because I would have never played Odin Sphere otherwise, and it's an interesting game to add to my, uh, my mental library of games that I have experienced, and it's been a really fun time over there. You know, we've played Thomas Was Alone and Escape Goat, some games that are really up my alley, but we've also played some games that I probably wouldn't have otherwise uh, touched, like Legend of Corindia, uh, which I actually want to, I feel like I didn't give a proper, I don't feel like I gave that game its credit, its due. Um, I will look back on uh, Legend of Corindia 2, which was a point-and-click adventure that Brian forced us all to play a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I will look back on that game with fond memories after the experience of actually having played that game fades because the game itself is 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 horrible i mean it's it's a point and click from the 90s so it has all of the the trappings of a point and click from the 90s it's not as brutal as a sierra game but it wasn't quite as charming as a, a lucas game but it was a good uh, point and click game i mean it, it's it, it played like a 90s point and click game but it charmed me and when the, the, when the time uh, of playing the game, like when the puns and the toadstool, when that stuff has faded, I will remember uh, Carindia pretty fondly. Uh, enough so that given the opportunity, I might play uh, the other two games in the series uh, if someone were just to give them to me for free. But uh, I, I felt like I didn't give that game its proper due in saying that 
the story was fun, the characters were interesting, and overall, I, I, I will remember that game fondly, even if the memory of having played the game and its lacking mechanical systems is still a little too fresh in my mind for me to necessarily say that I enjoyed it. All right, well, God, I've rambled on about nothing for a long time. Uh, so let me go ahead and just uh, close this out, guys. I do appreciate you listening. I hope you'll hang around for the next couple of weeks of content lists. Big Dave is cheap here. I will be posting some things. At least one of those uh, Nuclear Throne episodes is likely to go up in the next two weeks. And I may find time to do a first impression or two in that time frame. I just don't want you to expect anything because there's every possibility that every time I power on my computer, I will do nothing but go straight to Wildstar and play for three hours. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.